Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here from Creative Frontiers and in this video I'm going to show you how you can undo in a brush tip. That's right, if this is your first time visiting and you want to learn best practice techniques to create killer artwork, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss a thing. So if you make edits and you realise that one portion isn't right, you can undo that region and with the help of the history panel and the history brush that is possible. Again, with a lot of things like this, there's a couple of things to be aware of. So I'm going to take you through the history panel and also a couple of preferences as well. So the image in front of us that I've got here to work with, it started out life as uh, six images that I stitched together with Photo Merge and we now have this nice panorama. So this beach here is, uh, is sunny Three Cliffs Bay in Wales. And uh, you'll notice that if I pick up the zoom tool and zoom in, because it's quite a big image, I can zoom in and we can see the people on the beach in there. Now, um, I'm going to remove some of the tourists along the beach in there and just to empty it out a little bit. So again, you know, kind of thing is I'll go to the tools panel, pick up my spot healing brush tool, and then you'll want to make sure that your brush tip is big enough to remove a person with a left click, for example. You don't want the brush tip to be too big. So I go up there to the brush size in there. So somewhere between 20 and 25 pixels for this image, I can still hover my cursor outside of there and, and see what the brush size is like. And, and I'm happy with that. So I'll press return. I want to make sure that the option for type, what type of edit I want to make is content aware. And then from here, quite literally, I'll just hover over a person and then left click and then remove them like so. So the dark black line in there, when I click and hold down the mouse and drag, if I've got a region to remove, um, is showing you the parts where the brush will affect the image. Go over the mouse and it removes that person, click and drag across there. And I can keep working through and applying this. So, it, you know, it's nice and relatively effortless is the spot healing brush tool. And then what Photoshop's actually doing is, if you've never used the spot healing brush tool before, when you click, Photoshop will then decide very, very quickly what other parts of the image match the region and it uses and decides what to replace it with. And so all you have to do is click and drag and remove people. So if I do this one as well, you tend to find that sometimes if the details are a little bit fussy, you might have to click a few times. Um, you might get a repeating pattern sometimes. If you can't remove that repeating pattern, you're best to switch to the clone stamp tool or something like that. So I think we've removed a, a few people from there. Um, that's probably enough for now. And then someone turns around and says to you, do you know what? It pro I think it looked better with some some people on the beach in there, at least not completely emptied out. And he's thinking, oh, yeah, I suppose you're right. Um, then you go to the layers panel and you realize, oh, no, I didn't create an extra layer to put those edits in. And I've permanently done that to the background layer. So if I leave my layers panel flushing around on screen here, what you can do to rescue the situation is to go to the window menu at the top of the screen, go down the list to history and open up the history panel. And then you'll notice that there is a list of edits in here. So all of these in here are my spot healing brush tool edits. If I drag and pull that panel down, you'll notice that the latest edit that I've made and the current view of the file is right here. It's highlighted in a darker gray color. And that's where I am in the file. I could have wanted to click and it'll take me back steps in the file. So as I keep clicking on each of the worded steps in there, it will take me back to a point in time. Now that will also undo everything in the image. So anything I did in the image on these specific steps, it changes. So you can go back in there and you can click on them and you can undo. So in, from one very, very basic point of view, the history panel is slightly more intuitive than just going to the edit menu and choosing uh, undo state change or to toggle last day or to redo something. You can see all of your edits in that list in there, all the way back to the point where you first opened up the file. So all your edits are in the lower half going down. Um, what Photoshop does is it creates things called snapshots at the top up in here. So when you first open up the file, Photoshop will create a snapshot of, of what that image looks like in that point in time in there. In this case, it's called coastpano01.psd. You can see there that the very first thing is that I opened up the file. So a couple of things to be aware of. If I'm then looking here thinking, right, so yeah, I, I'll probably get rid of these people. I might want to keep these people here that are just behind the rocks. That's that's fine. It introduces some more people in there. So um, what I'd have to do then is go down the list and click in there like so. I know that those people were obviously in the image when I first opened it up. So as long as I in here click on one of these early steps, that dictates which point I will go back in time. So I know this is like getting in Doc's DeLorean. 
and then punching in October the 15th, 1985. I think it was October the 15th. Anyway, I digress. Going back in time and doing something back in history. And now the, the way that you do that is you will have to use the History Brush tool. So you can tap the Y key on the keyboard. It will give you either the History Brush tool or the Art History Brush tool. It's got to be the History Brush tool. And again, my brush tip in here is really big. So I'm going to go and change the size of that back down to something small like 22 pixels. Press Return and then leave all the options as they are at the top. And then from here, you don't click on the steps in here. You just tell Photoshop that you want to use the painting tool, the, the history brush tool to paint back to this point here when we first open up the file. So my uh, highlighting down at the bottom in here, all the other edits are present and I click and hold down the mouse and drag across that region and it undoes that region and only that bit of the re region of the image with the history brush tool. How cool is that? So if you do forget to do the thing that you ought to do, which is in the layers panel when you're healing and retouching, is to create an extra layer, then if all the edits are done in the background layer, for example, then you can use the history panel to get back and undo those things. And you'll notice in here, even the history brush tool is a state in there that you can change. If I go back a step, um, that's just like doing undo, but I'm just clicking in the list in there like so. So, um, yeah, there is an element of that in there. You can go back to your history state in there, go down to the bottom. And then if I um, click and drag across these people in here, obviously that has no effect because they were already in the file. But if I go back to my spot healing brush tool and then click and drag across them, I can remove them. And I can click and drag and remove these people as well. So a really neat way to be able to work in there. The thing that you ought to really be aware of, which is, um, which is, a, is a problem, if I'm now thinking, right, I'll go back then and I want to I want to reveal a couple of people from over here. There's some people down here. OK, so I'll uh, I'll click in here, go back in time. And uh, oh, there we are. That was probably one of the first things that I did. I, I, I removed these people. I'm going to put these people back in again. So um, I'll, I'll click back down my list in there. Notice that where I am at this moment in time is spot healing brush tool halfway down that list. The future has not yet been written. It's there, but it hasn't happened. I've gone back in time. So these are potential steps that I have made. Watch what happens then if I decide that I want to heal and retouch something else in the image. So if I go back up here and let's say, for example, uh, remove, uh, remove that person wearing yellow up there. So look at the history panel. When I hover my cursor over this region and click and hold down the mouse and drag, when I let go of the mouse, look at the history, it all disappears. So you need to be very careful when you're working with the history panel. If you do click back in the steps in there, that is actually something that you want to do. Um, but I have lost all the other edits inside of there now. So um, any of the other people that I hid, they've all now been revealed in there because I've lost those steps. So it's something to watch out for. Now, if you want to kind of avoid that situation, then you can go to the history panel, click on the panel flight menu, and you can go to history options. So by default, Photoshop will create a, a, a snapshot, which is just here at the top of there. When you open up the file, um, you can choose to automatically create a new snapshot when you save the file. So if I've worked on this file now, if I do a file save or save as, then it will create another snapshot underneath the previous one in there. Now, I'm not bothered about that, but I do want to turn on allow nonlinear history. Um, and then the other thing you can do is you can name any snapshots that you make. So you can actually make your own manual snapshots. If you want to create a snapshot of what the file looks like at any part of that editing process, you can do that yourself. So I'm going to turn that on because it will allow you to name it. Otherwise, it'll just call it snapshot one or two or three. You can also make layer visibility changes uh, part of the options in the list in here. Now, I'm not bothered about that, so I'm going to leave it turned off and then I'll click OK. So. Again, going back to this theory that if I want to go back now and redo those edits and hide those people, drag in along there and redo that, that is absolutely fine in there. So I'm just removing these people uh, along here, making some further edits in there like so. So all happy with that. If I now go back in time, back to the point like I did earlier, those people have revealed in there. So I'm thinking, oh, yep, that's where they were. If I click a little bit lower down again now, if I want to, I'm clicking in here. If I don't click all the way down the list in there and do what I did last time, this occasion, when I go back to my history brush tool over here, if I hover over this region and click and hold down the mouse, look what happens to the history panel. So I reveal those people. It takes you right down to the bottom of the history panel. 
it actually states the history of Russia as one of those steps, but you don't lose the history in there. So it's an important thing to note is that that's a way of accidentally not removing the future history in your in your history panel in there. Um, but to be clear, um, if I click back in here, it doesn't remove those people. It doesn't change that history state in here for everything that preceded it. It only updates the file in this step in here. So they are still hidden in the previous steps. So it isn't as though you can go right up to the top up here and then reveal somebody and they'll then all of a sudden be revealed in all the other steps lower down. They're not. So that's an important distinction to make inside of there. If at this point now I think, yeah, do you know what? I'm going to do a snapshot. I'll go down to the camera icon down here, click on that, call it a name, and I'll call this um, uh, stage one. I'll create a snapshot of the full document, not a particular merge layer or a current layer in there, but for the full document, and then click OK. Notice now that it has created that snapshot for me. So if I'm working along in here, I know that at this point, um, all these people have been removed. I can carry on editing, pick up my spot healing brush tool and remove these people from the beach along here again. And from along here. I know now that I can scroll back up the list, not clicking any step, but if I click on snapshot one, um, which is called stage one because I named it, and then go back to the history brush tool. I know that in this region here, there were some people. I can put them back in again. So that's how you can create your own snapshot and paint back to it as well, which is pretty neat. So, um, yeah, there are a few things to be aware of with history panel, but it will essentially allow you to paint back in time and not undo the whole image. Um, the other button down at the bottom in there will allow you to create a duplicate of your image as well. So if you ever wanted to create um, a second version of your image, when I click on that, there you go. Notice in here, it will read history brush in there um, and it creates that um, generic name for the temporary file in there. So this is a copy as the file was at that whatever point in time it was in the previous version. So it creates a duplicate. Um, now I don't need that in here, so I'm going to close it down. But um, that's what that button does at, down at the bottom, creates a duplicate image of wh wherever the files that you're working on at that moment in time. Now, the history panel will show your last 50 steps in there. If you want to have more, you can. You can have a lot more, but the more steps you allow Photoshop to show in the history panel, it does burden the machine with more work to do and remember. So if I go to Photoshop CC, down to Preferences, and then choose uh, Performance, um, you can find this by uh, on a PC by going to Edit and then choosing Preferences. Under Performance, then you'll notice that over here we have History States. So by default, it's 50 in uh, the later versions of Photoshop. You can click on the little drop down arrow in there and you can get all the way up to 1000 steps in there. But as I say, it's lovely to be able to have that many steps to go back to, but it will burden the hard drive and the graphics processing and all those other kind of things as well. So it may well affect performance. Um, you'll probably find that somewhere between 50 and 100 steps will probably be enough for, for a lot of people. I'm going to knock that back to 50 in there. Um, cache levels. Right, so what this means is that in Photoshop, your image will be broken down into invisible tiles. So if I make an edit to the very lower right corner of the image, Photoshop doesn't need to redraw the image to show me that edit takes shape on screen or to go back in time. So it really is all just about trying to save the burden of the computer, having to redraw the, the entire image every time you make an edit. It only updates a certain quadrant or a certain square of your image in there. So what you can do in here is you can increase, if you've got a really big image, you can increase the number of cache levels in there, which will subdivide uh, invisibly almost um, your image into smaller chunks. And so saving and updating those kind of things should be quicker. But for far that's lower in size and things, you could drop the cache levels back down to a lower figure in there. That's what that means. So I'm going to set that back to four in there. Um, and with that done then, um, that's pretty much it for the options. I'll click OK in there. Um, last thing I want to show you then is that the history panel will only show you steps in here for the active open document and that will not live with the file for in the entire process. Once I close this document down, so if I now go to file and choose save as, and if I say this as beach pano two and then click on save, if I then ch choose to close this document down, so again, just so you can see everything in this panel, all of the edits and the snapshots at the top, if I close this document down, go back to file, 
and then choose open and then open up pa Coast Pano 2 and then choose open. Take a look at what happens in the history panel. So you start all of the way back to square one again. So the snapshot at the top is what the image looks like now and any edits I make are for this session and this session only. So yeah, the history panel is great. A couple of things to be aware of, um, but um, it essentially allows you to undo in a brush tip with the history panel and the history brush. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up to help the channel. And as always, you can subscribe so you don't miss any future content. And until next time, folks, farewell.